Today I'm going to be talking to you about the end of the data warehouse. So you're all here at a very, for, 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 for a big reason. We're here because I think we all understand that there's a real generational shift at work right now. Uh, we've, it's not just that the technologies are changing. It's that the kind of questions we're asking, the kind of questions that Mike alluded to, the kind of questions as an industry we're trying to attack are shifting, and that's driving new ways of approaching them and, and new challenges with the status quo. So I want to use this time to share a little bit about what we're doing. The journey you know, started with, with what I saw at uh, Greenplum, where I ran product, and some of the challenges, you know, great technology, great company, but still grounded in the world of traditional data warehousing. And where, we've, where I think we've seen things start to move that has been the motivation for where we are today. So I'm going to take you through the story of Platfora, and I hope you'll uh, be excited to continue the conversation. So it starts with the data warehouse. We all know this, uh, this thing very well. It looks kind of like this in a sense. It's a, you know, a place where you put your data, but you spend 12, 18 months desi designing the schemas, organizing what the questions you want to answer from it. You bake it all in, and you has run this project. At the end of it, hopefully, you have something that's kind of useful. And guess what? If you're wrong and you want to go in a different direction, you, uh, you spend six months reorganizing it at each step. And so you know, we all know this well. Um, the challenge is it's breaking. And it's not breaking because of scale of data. You can put a lot of data in these systems. It's breaking more fundamentally because it's designed around you knew knowing your questions ahead of time. And as those questions, as you want to know things about your users, where you want to slice and look at a population and re-slice in some interesting way, get to some new insight, it doesn't keep up. And that's, that's a fundamental limitation. And so, so here we are talking about Hadoop. And I know many of you are heavy users of the technology already. The beautiful thing, I think the most disruptive thing about Hadoop is you can just load all that data up, and there's no friction. You can load it up much like this. It's pretty powerful. Um, the challenge is, what do you do with it once it's in there? That's pretty, you know, today, as you know, Mike alluded to, there's a lot of challenges in actually doing useful things with that. And so there's a lot of attempts to try to change that. Uh, there are a lot of BI vendors that would try to tell you you should just query it. And you know, it sort of looks like this. You send down the query, and it, you wait. And maybe let's fire off another one. Now, I'm not going to wait for this to finish. It's going to take a while, so we'll go to the next slide. But there's a reason that doesn't work, and that's because essentially you're asking to scan this massive volume of data. Even if this thing was really fast, it makes life better. But fundamentally, laws of physics kind of dictates that that's not the complete answer. And so what you end up doing is you stick a data warehouse in the middle. And that's interesting, but it is. Complex to build, a lot of implementation costs, a lot of effort, and the more, interest, the more challenging thing is for that BI product, that exploratory BI product on the other side, you have a limited view. You're just seeing what's in that data warehouse. You're not seeing what's in Hadoop. You're not able to touch the real data, and that's a problem. And so we're, we're, we're here, and today, yesterday, we announced our in-memory BI platform for Hadoop, the first of its kind. It's really technology built from the ground up for Hadoop, something we're very passionate about. Really new stack all the way up, from Hadoop all the way up to the, end, to the user, su user surface. Um, it's really built around three ideas which we're going to explore this afternoon, so later this morning. A whole new core that's about accelerating Hadoop in memory, providing sub-second interactivity and extracting out the interesting, the interesting data, the interesting aggregations from that. Um, an engine that, uh, that, that drives Hadoop in a, in a new way, and then an exploratory BI surface that looks a little bit like this. And so what you're seeing here is a first of its kind, completely canvas-based, HTML5 canvas-based renderer, web-based. Early customers have been blown away by the ability to, to do this kind of exploration without having to build a data warehouse, a data mart. We have a, one of our early beta customers, somebody who'd been using Hadoop for two weeks, had been, was lost. Three weeks later, this person is the expert. They're training the organization on how to use this to just do stunning things with data. And the amazing thing is, there's no, there's no setting up a data mart, data warehouse, any of that to get going. It's just, just go. And this is really kind of remarkable. Uh, it's collaborative. It uh, you know, runs on tablets, phones, and so on. So it's a really different kind of paradigm. Um, and so our focus is really, how do we make, how does Platforma make Hadoop? Amazing, and that's the, the fundamentally the promise we deliver to you. And so, with that, I'd like to invite you. Uh, after this, at uh, 10:50, I'm presenting in conjunction with one of our architects on uh, going deeper here, looking at this use case, and really drilling in to uh, the technology as well as a really, a really thorough demo. 
and then tomorrow invite you to a session with Capital One Labs where we're going to be going into their use case. And with that, I want to thank you guys. Uh, this is exciting. We'd love to, love to continue the conversation, and uh, let's, let's keep talking. Thank you very much.